Moving on to the next strategy for solving limits, we're going to talk about rationalizing. And rationalizing, as you guessed it, is a strategy that's used whenever you have a limit that usually has a square root. So notice here how we have a square root of x plus 4, square root of x, square root of 8 minus x, and square root of 8 plus x, and then square roots here. So for all these four examples, we're going to be using the strategy of rationalizing to solve these limits. Now, a quick point I want to make before we get into the examples is that whenever you see radicals that have a third root, or maybe you have like rational exponents like this 1 over 3 or 2 over 3, or you have the square root of x cubed, which would end up being, um, if you change it to a rational exponent, be x to the power of 3 over 2. Any type of rational exponent like this or third root radicals, you're not going to be using the strategy of rationalizing. We're going to deal with these in a future video. The strategy is going to be called change of variable. So just know that rationalizing is only used for regular square root radicals. So this x plus square root of x plus 4, square root of x, etc., etc. Notice how none of these radicals have like a third root beside them and the x's don't have a rational exponent. So just be aware of that. Also, before getting into these examples, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with rationalizing radicals, both one term and two terms. It's mostly going to be rationalizing two term radicals. So if you're not comfortable with that, I would suggest you go back and watch the videos for where we covered that, rationalizing two term radicals. You can find that by clicking the link below and going to the first section. So moving on to our first example, we got the limit as x approaches 0 for the square root of x plus 4 minus 2 all over x. First thing you check with limits, can you make a direct substitution? Well, if we sub in 0 for x, notice how this denominator is going to be 0 and we can't be dividing something by 0, so that won't work. So let's maybe try to get rid of this radical in the numerator by rationalizing. And notice how this is a two-term radical, so we would multiply it by its conjugate. So the conjugate of the square root of x plus 4 minus 2 is just the square root of x plus 4 plus 2. And we put that in the denominator as well, so it's like we're multiplying this expression by 1. So when we multiply the numerators out, basically a two-term expression times this conjugate, you just have to multiply the first terms and the last terms together. So if you multiply the first terms together, square root of x plus 4 times the square root of x plus 4 is just x plus 4. And then minus 2 times positive 2 is just minus 4. And then this is all over. If we multiply the denominators, let's keep those terms separate. So we have this x here by itself, and then we have the square root of x plus 4 plus 2. And now notice how the 4's in the numerator cancel out, so we'll have the limit as x goes to 0 of x all over that same denominator. So square root of x plus 4 plus 2. And then notice how these x's here will cancel out, so we'll just be left with the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over the square root of x plus 4 plus 2. And now notice, because we canceled out that x in the denominator, we could sub in 0 for x now. So if we sub in 0 for x, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, so our final answer is 1 over 4. So that is the limit of this original question here. Moving on to the second example, we got the limit as x goes to 9 of the square root of x minus 3 all over x minus 9. First thing we check, direct substitution, can we sub in this 9? Well, no we can't because the denominator will be 0. So let's maybe try to get rid of this radical in the numerator by rationalizing it. And notice how it's a two-term radical, so we would multiply it by its conjugate. So then taking that expression, multiplying it by the conjugate of the numerator over the conjugate, it's like we're multiplying it by 1. So square root of x minus 3 times the square root of x plus 3 we can just multiply the first terms and the last terms together. So the square root of x times the square root of x is just x. Or actually, let's rewrite this limit first. So the square root of x times the square root of x is x. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. And then let's keep these two terms separate. So we'll have x minus 9 and the square root of x plus 3. Now, a common thing that students like to do is they like to take this denominators, these two denominators, and then foil them out. But you don't want to do that. You want to keep them separate because now, if you notice what's going to happen, is these x minus 9s are going to cancel out. 
So now you're gonna have the limit as x goes to nine of one over the square root of x plus three. And now you can make a direct substitution. So if we sub in nine for x, we'd have the square root of nine, which is three plus three is six. So our answer is one over six for this limit. Now moving on to the third example, I erased the previous two examples, if you notice, to give myself more room. Now, we got the limit as x goes to zero for the square root of eight minus x minus the square root of eight plus x all over x. First thing we check, can we make a direct substitution? Well, no we can't because if we sub in zero for x, we'll have this denominator of zero and we can't have that, that'll be undefined. So we have to do something else. So let's try to rationalize the numerator and notice how it's a two term expression. So we're gonna multiply it by its conjugate. And the conjugate of that two term expression in the numerator is going to be the square root of eight minus x plus the square root of eight plus x. So notice the only thing that's changed is that sign in the middle. We change it from a negative to a positive. The signs under the radical stay the same as we've done in previous videos. So be careful with that. You're not changing the signs under the radicals of those separate expressions, you're only changing the sign in the middle of those two expressions, which is this negative, we change it to a positive. So multiplying it by the conjugate over the conjugate, it's like we're multiplying this expression by one. And now when we multiply the numerators, notice because we're multiplying a two term expression by its conjugate, we just have to multiply those first and last terms. So the square root of eight minus x times the square root of eight minus x is just eight minus x and then the square root of eight plus x times the square root of eight plus x is just eight plus x, and then negative times positive gives us a negative. The two terms in the denominators, let's keep those separate. And now notice how we can simplify that numerator. So we can distribute this negative inside the brackets, so we'd have eight minus eight, the eights cancel out, and then we'd have negative x minus x, which would give us negative two x and then our denominator still stays the same. Let's keep those terms separate. So we got the square root of eight minus x plus the square root of eight plus x. And now notice how the x's will cancel out. So we'll be left with the limit as x goes to zero of negative two over the square root of eight minus x plus the square root of eight plus x. And now we can comfortably substitute that zero for x. So this would go to zero and this would go to zero. So we'd have the square root of eight plus the square root of eight. Those are like terms. So we would end up with negative two over two square root of eight. Because the square root of eight, there's like this one in front. So one square root of eight plus one square root of eight gives us two square root of eight. And notice how these twos cancel out. So we're just left with negative one over the square root of eight. So that there is our final answer. Negative one over the square root of eight is the limit for this original expression. And moving on to our fourth and final example, we have the limit as x goes to three of the square root of seven minus x minus two all over one minus the square root of four minus x. Now, this particular question is basically as tough of a question for rationalizing limits as you'll get. So the first thing you wanna check is, can we make a direct substitution? Well, if we sub in this three for x, notice how we'll have four minus three, which is one, square root of one is one, and then one minus one is zero. So we can't do that because the denominator is gonna be zero. But what do we do now? Because notice how we have a radical in both the numerator and the denominator, so which one do we rationalize? Well, let's start off by trying to rationalize the denominator. Let's try to get rid of the square root. And once we do that, maybe then we'll be able to substitute that three for x and the denominator won't be zero. So taking the conjugate of that two term expression in the denominator, one minus the square root of four minus x, the conjugate of that is one plus the square root of four minus x. So taking this expression, multiplying it by the conjugate over the conjugate, when we multiply the numerators, let's keep those two expressions separate. And then when we multiply the, this two term expression by its conjugate, one times one is one, and then the square root or the negative square root of four minus x times the positive square root of four minus x 
would just give us negative bracket 4 minus x. So then keeping that numerator the same and then simplifying the denominator, the denominator would simplify into x minus 3 when we distribute that negative inside that bracket. So now we have this new limit and this expression is equivalent to this one because we just multiplied it by 1. So notice how we still can't directly substitute a value of 3 for x because now this x minus 3 term is going to be 0 as well in the denominator and that would give us an undefined answer. So what do we do at this point? Well, let's maybe try to rationalize this term here, this square root of 7 minus x minus 2 by multiplying this whole expression by its conjugate. So we'd have the square root of 7 minus x plus 2 over the square root of 7 minus x plus 2. Now the reason why we're multiplying it by the conjugate of this and not of this, notice how the conjugate of this is 1 minus the square root of 4 minus x, and then we would just end up where we started. So we don't want that. We wanted to get rid of that term, so there's no point of multiplying it again by that term and bringing it back. So let's try something different. So we're going to rationalize this term here, this bracket in the numerator. So that's why I mul multiplied it by its conjugate over its conjugate. So now when we multiply the numerators, we'll have three expressions multiplied together. But these two expressions, because they are conjugates of each other, let's just multiply those together by themselves. So because they're conjugates of each other, we would just multiply the first term and the last term together, so we'd end up with this bracket here. The square root of 7 minus x times the square root of 7 minus x is just 7 minus x. Negative 2 times positive 2 is just negative 4. Then this 1 plus square root of 4 minus x stays as is. And then in the denominator, we would keep these two terms separate. This x minus 3 and this square root of 7 minus x plus 2. And then keeping everything the same except for this bracket, if we simplify it, basically we would end up with negative x plus 3. And then these other three brackets, they stay the same. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to get rid of this x minus 3 term because that's making the denominator 0 at this point. Because if we sub in 3 for x, this bracket will be 0. So notice how we're pretty close to canceling out these terms, but this term here is not the same. This is negative x plus 3, this one is positive x minus 3. But if we take a negative out of this bracket, so let's say we factor out a negative, then this is going to turn into a positive x, and then this positive sign is going to turn into a negative sign. So we just took a negative out of that bracket, and now notice how the x minus 3's cancel out and we're left with negative 1, there's like a negative 1 in front, times 1 plus the square root of 4 minus x all over the square root of 7 minus x plus 2. And now we can sub in that 3 for x and we won't have a denominator of 0. So when we sub in that 3 for x, we'd have 4 minus 3, which is 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, times that negative in front, so we'd have negative 2 in the numerator and then subbing in 3 into this bracket here, 7 minus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So we end up with negative 2 over 4, and that simplifies to negative 1 over 2. So that there is our final answer for this limit. So notice how we had to rationalize both the denominator and the numerator. You could have done it all at once, but I just wanted to show it in a series of steps so you understand it a little better. But you could have easily, at the beginning, also put this bracket up here and then just multiplied everything and maybe then you would have got the uh, answer faster. But again, I just wanted to show it to you in steps. So. This question is really confusing and it's as hard of a question that you'll get for rationalizing limits. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.